This is the best of the week on Relevant Radio. Today we're talking about grief and loss. Here to guide our thoughts, our prayers, and our discussion is our spiritual director, Father Michael Hurley. Father Michael is a Dominican priest serving parishes on the West Coast, and currently he's the pastor of St. Dominic Parish in the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Father Michael, welcome back to the program. Thanks for being with us. Uh, good morning, Patrick. I'm delighted to be as here with you as always, and then all of our listeners. There is something about this time of year, isn't there, Father? I mean, it just makes it seem a little bit more palpable, a little bit more present to us when we're facing the loss of a loved one. And uh, and again, many people, this is the time of year that they pass into eternal life. I was just uh, remarking on this yesterday here because um, uh, in, even in our own um, Dominican community, uh, within family members, there's there's just been a, a wintering, so to speak. It's you mm-hmm. get into these uh, short uh, daylight hours. As a pastor, I every time around this year, we do have, I would say, proportionally more people pass away in the winter uh, than any other time of year. I've never actually. I should probably it would be interesting to look at the statistics on that. But I would, I would be yeah. I would not be surprised. I would not. I'll just put it that way. I wouldn't be surprised to to hear that that more people pass away in this time of year than any other time of year. Yeah, yeah. And again, it can be especially hard when we're gathering yeah. as family. And uh, and even I remember then that 2016 when my mom passed away. And, you know, I, I so much look forward every year to Midnight Mass um, at mm. our, our beloved cathedral where we were parishioners. And it was just such a beautiful, that was kind of the pinnacle of my Christmas season. And knowing that, well, it's just not going to be possible this year. There was there were just so many different things. And yet, at the same time, I'm so consoled by the fact that, of course, the whole reason that Christ came was to give us hope in the midst of all this the, the suffering and death and to redeem us into a reconciled relationship with God that promises eternal life. I think it, it's worth mentioning and worth pointing out that uh, this this wasn't in the initial plan of God, right? I mean, the, the suffering, this grief, this loss, this death— all of these things were um, things that were resultant because of our of our turning away, of our turning away from He who is life Himself. Absolutely, no. There's it, God did not. God created us, and He created us to live forever. So yeah. death was not, if you will, part of the quote unquote original plan. Um, and so this is why we and we know this because Christ speaks of this, and in fact acts in this way. He's he's troubled at death. He actually becomes. It's one of the times where he exhibits uh, anger <laughs> and uh, mm. frustration. He groans and reveals as he's churned up. And so yeah, it was not part of God. Did God in a sense didn't uh, plant this? Didn't create it initially? But when uh, our free will was exercised towards self and not not God, we know in the very first pages of Scripture, then we suffer death, and that's the consequence, the wages of sin or death, as St. Paul yeah. says. Um, and so we just have to, in a sense, recognize that this isn't what God originally intended, but, and this is a beautiful thing, he's given us human mechanisms. He's built into our DNA a kind of, just like we have a, an immune system for our body, right? So even if, even though we were built to live forever, our body can still kind of heal itself. That's what, that's what medicine does, to activate right. our immune system. So too, there's a both psychological and spiritual immune system that he's built into us. And grief is actually part of that, I would say, psychological and even spiritual immune system that can be activated towards healing. So even though it wasn't God's part of his original plan, he's built in us (laughs) a kind of healing power or resonance or immune system, as I say, in order to be the um, process by which the entry point, the portal, to be healed uh, from loss. Mm. And that's a, that's a fantastic point as we're talking about it. And I, I guess just one more question, too, before we get yeah. into that, because I do want to explore that. But um, specifically, do you think that because this wasn't part of the initial plan of God to uh, to enter into these things of d- grief, loss, suffering, death, all these sorts of things, that maybe we shouldn't necessarily go too far down the road of trying to make sense of it. I mean, it seems like I'm not saying that our human minds don't want to reach out and try to make some sort of logical sense to it. But I guess it occurs to me that if that if this is a resultant factor of us turning away from God, then it's also a resultant factor of us turning away from he who is his intelligibility, his reason, his, his, his intelligence himself, right? And so I guess making sense of it, putting the blocks all together just so it comes, oh, okay, now I get it, that that's not something that necessarily is promised. Absolutely. This is just a fantastic point you're making. I think I should interview you, Patrick, today. This is great. No, it's, no, it's, it's fantastic because it's, 
it's um, especially when we've lost a loved one. And I would put just to be clear in our, our garbage. So sin and death is, 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 if you will, the what's experienced, if you will. And then sorrow and grief is our reaction to it. And I think those are, I don't want to lump those two together because sorrow and grief, are, even though they're negative things, are actually part of the, uh, the immune system that heals. But okay, so sin yeah. and death, when yeah. you're talking about sin and death, just loss per se, yeah, there's, there's a mystery there that if our expectation is to figure out why it happened, like I, every time I, we had our mercy night here last night, a huge event to do confessions, and it was just a beautiful moment. People returned to the church. It was so beautiful. And, and when you know, you, you're talking to folks, and they're like, you know, it's been so long. Why did I wait so long? And you know, it's just kind of like, I, and they're like, I don't really know. I know there was some fear, some trepidation, but there's no ultimate. We have excuses. We might give quote unquote reasons, but there really is no there there when it comes to to sin and death. <laughs> As you say, the intelligibility. There's it's a lack of something. It's the absence of something rather than the presence of something. So when it comes to facing sin, our own sin and the death of loved ones, and even our own mortality, there. If our expectation is to understand it we will always be frustrated because it's trying to understand, it's like trying to understand darkness or a shadow. Mm. It can only truly be understood in the light of the object that is casting the shadow from, or the light that illumines the presence that is there. So in the same way that you wouldn't be frustrated in not understanding darkness or a shadow, we can't have the expectation as during this moment of sin or during this moment of trying to wrestle and reflect on death, there, we don't want to waste a lot of energy in trying to, quote, unquote, figure it out. So grief, grieving, is then actually a, a help, a, an assistance from God that we're given. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. I, I just, I just, I'll share just a very brief story. I was, this was even before I was ordained that we do a kind of ministry, oftentimes as part of our training formation, where we assist at a hospital uh, and just, provide pastoral support as we're able. And I remember being, I actually did mine in Salt Lake City, and I was, I walked into that, to a hospital room once, and the person had just uh, passed away. And uh, the, the person, and this is not to cast a stance on any particular religion, but, but uh, the pastoral minister who was there, their elder, was in the midst of, uh, obviously, the just the very present <laughs> death of this person, was saying, oh, well, isn't it wonderful that this person is now with God and is, you know, celebrating with all the angels and everything. And so they were saying what they were saying was not untrue. They were saying true things, but they were perhaps the most unhelpful things, at least from my, my, my experience, in saying, in other words, there's no way to go immediately from the experience of the separation from a loved one or even separation from, from God and, and the ways we do that and go immediately to the hope that's promised through the incarnation, the death and resurrection of Christ, there has to be a process where human beings, just as if we aren't saved or lost in a moment, this is why we're not angels, we have the whole life of our journey, <laughs> that loss is so devastating, it's so traumatic, that God gives us time, and we need time in order to heal. And so to try to circumvent that and go right to the end, it's kind of trying to like cheat the system a little bit, so to speak. In other words, to try to circumvent it, and God, grief is good. Sorrow is good. It's God's way, inbuilt, natural way, in order to process, you know, allow things to heal and to be able to come and then better appreciate the hope that we have. In other words, if we go right to the end, so to speak, we wouldn't be able to receive the fullness of what he has for us because we wouldn't have been able to process and truly be, we wouldn't have the same capacity to receive what he wants to give us if we haven't healed yet. Um, mm -hmm. And so grief is, uh, in a sense, the most powerful thing that God has given us for dealing with the most traumatic uh, situation we could have, that is separation from loved ones, separation from our own health, separation from God. Grief and sorrow bring us to a place of being able to be capable to receive the fullness of, of presence again. And this is why it's in the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are Sermon on the Mount. They're that life plan. They're there, they're, if you will, the schema for all healthy, holy, and happiness living. Blessed are those, or happy are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So it's right there in that, in that one line is that mourning, and whatever other um, uh, synonym you want to give for that grief, sorrow. Blessed are those who experience, enter into that journey, a psychological and emotional journey of, of loss. <laughs> Why? because they will experience the fullness 
of the presence of the one who created them and created everything, and they will be comforted uh, and accompanied by our Lord. So that's that's what we need to do. We need to enter into the morning, first of all, into the grief and allow it to heal us as, as, yeah. as the Lord wills. Father, let's go to the phones. We've got Tom, who's calling in from Torrance, California. Tom, welcome to The Inner Life. Thanks for calling in. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, my mom passed away in, on January 2nd of this year, and it's made it very difficult. But uh, I've joined a uh, grief and loss program, which made it really nice, you know, because everybody was in the same uh, boat, might, might say. I'm sorry for your loss, and it sounds like you were able to find some kind of support in that in that group. Is that would that be right? Yeah, that's right. I think you make a wonderful point, Don, because it's sometimes when we are separated, when we you know, talking about losing your mom, and it's you feel like you're alone. There's an isolation that feels, uh, and so to know that you're not alone is so tremendous. And to connect with people can is part of the part of that healing process. I'm, I'm delighted that you were able to find a group, and you, you had the courage to do that. A lot of people don't uh, they, they don't take that step out. It's difficult to step out. So I'm glad I'm glad you were able to do that. I appreciate the call, Tom. And indeed, may your mother rest in peace, and we uh, will pray for the repose of her soul and pray for you and your ongoing grief and loss. And Father, Tom's call really does bring up this this sense of consolation that is offered through others with similar and shared experiences, and certainly that is a great help. But let's start with some of the consolations that come from the Lord himself in his presence. I'm thinking of some, you know, some scriptures. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for why you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And Jesus himself promising, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. That there is something that is to be acknowledged there about the Lord, maybe especially present to us in these times of grief and loss. Absolutely. It goes back to what we were saying earlier about that the promise isn't that he was going to take away grief and sorrow and these emotions which feel so heavy. He doesn't remove them. He simply walks with us and carries them with us as we go along in life. In other words, the promise isn't the removal of that, but that he will carry it with us and he will carry us with him. And so it's it's the promise of presence that we're not alone rather than the kind of elimination or the uh, the promise uh, of just taking stuff away from us. Um, mm-hmm. So it's, it's a beautiful it's 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 a it's beautiful consolation to know that even in the midst of our our sorrow, the, the walking through literally the valley of the shadow of death, that he's with us <laughs> and he's 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 got our back, so to speak. He's yeah. present to both to both to to um, allay the fear and to the, all the other threats we might think would be devastating us, but also to to comfort us and ultimately that I love that how that psalm ends with him. Uh, setting a great meal before us. So these these uh, holidays are, are a lot of times revolve around meals, right? <laughs> they yeah. shared meals and and, yeah. and that particular foods, and to know there's a particular um, heavenly banquet with particular foods that is going to be, if you will, the eternal <laughs> ritual of of communion, of union with one another. And so he promises not just in a sense his presence, but the presence of all those who are connected to him in a kind of communion, in a kind of great heavenly banquet and feast. A mm. tremendous promise. Yeah, it is a tremendous promise, which, you know, the consolations and the comfort of the Lord, I think one of the things, too, we can we can see is that, yes, he is there, he's present, he will comfort, he will console. That doesn't necessarily mean that all the sorrow, as you were saying earlier, Father, that that's going to go away in an instant, though, yeah? Yeah, and, and in fact, it, it would be bad if it went away in an instant. I yeah, mean, I'll be bold. Yeah. I'll be bold. Okay. Here's a hot take. <laughs> I like if, it. If you could push a button, if you could push a button and say, "I choose to go through the sorrow," or I just want to kind of eliminate it or fast forward it, it would be. And we let's just say we had, you know, we we we're in science fiction right now, <laughs> spiritual science fiction. I could either fast forward <laughs> or I could experience it. Right. It would be worse for God has made it clear to us in the way He He deals with us in His providence works. It would be worse. We would be worse off, or we would not be able to have the capacity to receive the unique presence he wants to offer us if we were simply to fast forward through the grief and the sorrow and the mourning. Like the mourning is necessary. It's, it's the, if you want to go back to the immune system, it is the medicine, <laughs> the psychological and spiritual medicine that we are built for as human beings in our DNA, in our nature, so to speak, to grieve for what has been lost, to mourn yeah. for that which has been separated. And if we don't do that, if we somehow 
take it away, we're actually less human. <laughs> we're less of who God created us to be, even though he didn't intend separation, death, and loss. He's given us the capacity to self-heal. And when I say self-heal, I mean we have from within us those processes that, elevated by God's grace and presence, um, are able to heal us from within, uh, not from simply exterior. This entire episode of The Inner Life is on the Relevant Radio app. The Relevant Radio app is completely free and updated daily with fresh articles, podcasts, and prayers. Don't delay. Download the app today. And thanks for listening.